Okay, buongiorno a tutti. Um, hello everyone. Uh, before we start, one question. Uh, originally, I wanted to give the presentation in, in Italian, but I saw on the agenda there is no information about it. So is somebody of you here that doesn't understand Italian? Raise your hands now. One. Mm. Sorry? And for everyone else, it's good if you I continue in English or qualcuno ha un problema se continuo in inglese e non in italiano? E uno contro? Ok. Come? Hey, I, I, I know. Uh, but they asked me to ask. I was expecting to see on the agenda that was clearly marked. Uh, as an Italian talk. Anyway, so let's continue in English. Sorry about that. Um, again, uh, hello everyone. Uh, my name is Christian Antonini. I'm not Italian, I'm Swiss, but I live in the Italian part of Switzerland. And in, over the next uh, 45 minutes, I plan to talk uh, about the support of JSON in uh, uh, relational databases. Okay. Uh, before starting with the presentation, just a few words about myself. I, uh, I'm a consultant and work for a company named Trivadis. Uh, I'm based, let's say, or where my office is based is Zurich, but I live uh, south of Switzerland, the Italian part. Um, I'm well interested in anything related to performance and databases, so I like to speak spend a lot of time, for example, on uh, optimizers and stuff like that. But since performance, uh, it's only possible when you have good design. I'm also very interested in designing databases and so on. Okay. Since I'm very interested in these kind of topics, uh, already it is now almost 11 years ago, I published this book for APRES, Troubleshooting Oracle Performance. Uh, six or five years ago, I published a second edition. And now I'm working on a third edition, but I have no, um, let's say, I don't know when or whether it will appear. Otherwise, I'm a, uh, an Oracle East director. Thank you, Oracle, for having me today. And I'm a member of the Octable Network. So that was just uh, shortly about myself, about the content of the next 40 minutes. I will, of course, start with a short introduction, OK? Uh, and in the introduction, what I want to say now is that I won't speak about JSON, what is JSON, whatever. I consider that everyone knows more or less what uh, a JSON document is, so I will only cover the support in, in uh, databases. Then we will talk about topics like generating JSON, storing JSON, and uh, querying JSON data uh, in a relational database. And of course, at the end, a short summary. And there are also some uh, uh, references at the end. Okay. So, um, first topic: multi multi-model uh, databases. Okay. Even though the title says we are talking about relational databases, in my opinion, all leading databases, not only relational databases, are in fact multi-model. So they do not support only relational data as we know it but you can store JSON, you can store XML data, documents, a lot of stuff. Okay, so the typical database, I mean the good ones, support a number of models. And this is good because if you have an application which is not uh, uh, huge, instead of having several database engines, one for uh, the documents, one for uh, the relational part, and one for whatever time series, you want one database that support uh, all these uh, kind of models, okay? Um, and so it's good that we have those kind of databases. Of course, if you are on a huge project, maybe even several engines might be good, but in most cases, I would say it's not uh, necessary, okay? So as I just mentioned, uh, most of them are really uh, multi-model today, okay? And what is important, even if you store data in one model, for example, relational, it doesn't mean that you need this data in a different format. So maybe you store it relational, but you need to send this data to somebody else. Uh, you need it in JSON format or the other way around, okay? 
Now, the typical JSON use cases, if you deal with databases, I will say, especially the relational databases. The first one is to export JSON data. Uh, so again, you have some data stored in your relational database, and you have to uh, give this data to another system. For example, I'm from a uh, few months ago, I worked for a customer in such an area. We had something, I don't know, uh, 100 million rows. We had to move them from Oracle to Allelograph, which is a, a graph database, okay? And to move this data, the customer defined a JSON uh, schema. So we had to generate the data from Oracle uh, based on this JSON schema, and then we sent the data to the other database that was imported. And here I will say when you export data, there are two ways of uh, doing it. Either, for example, uh, the case I just mentioned, you have a specific schema you have to comply with, Okay, that can be also quite complex. Or you want to use JSON instead of uh, CSV file, because CSV file have, a, I would say, a number of uh, kind of limitation problems. Uh, how do you deal with escaping special character? Anyway, uh, so JSON, it's also good to just replace a simple CSV file. Uh, from the other side, of course, if you export data, sometimes you have to import it. Okay, so you get some specific JSON data and you want to import it. And when you import in JSON, there are two, I will say, approach. The first one is to store it relational. So you really have to uh, process the JSON data and get some relation out of it. Or you store JSON in the, in the database. Could be the same uh, uh, schema or another one. And of course, if you store uh, JSON, not only because you import it, the next use case is to implement a JSON uh, document uh, store, basically. Uh, instead of using, uh, I don't know, some kind of Mongo uh, DB or stuff like that, you can say, why not using my relational database? And I think before the lunch, there was even a presentation on that topic uh, as well. And the fourth uh, main usage that we see from JSON is to extend the relational model. And here there are two main use cases. The first one is that you want an extensible schema uh, because JSON is flexible. So you have an application where, I don't know, an end, uh, end user can say, okay, I need to store some additional information which is not available as a column in the database. So you can say, okay, let's put a JSON column where you store all this uh, kind of bucket where you store anything else that the user wants. And the last one is to uh, handle a uh, high number of columns which are sparse. And for that I mean, I don't know, you have a specific, uh, specific piece of information, uh, customer information, and you have, I don't know, 10,000 possible attributes that you can associate to this user or to this, uh, to this uh, customer. And for example, or in most databases, you are limited in the number of columns. And if you, from these 10,000, you only store, I don't know, 20, 40 of them, it makes no sense to store it really relational. And so the idea is to extend a relational table with a JSON column where you store information uh, in a different format. Okay. So these are, the, I would say, the main, main use cases we see. Okay where JSON is relevant, even though you are working on a, uh, with a relational database. Now, talking JSON and rela relational database, in my opinion, what is interesting to see is that uh, since SQL 2016, JSON is part of the SQL standard. Okay, there is what is called SQL JSON, okay? And in uh, SQL 2016, if you check what was added, we have 44 new uh, features added to the standard, and 22 of them are because of JSON. So you can see that a good part of the new stuff integrated in the SQL standard is because of JSON, okay? And that is, I would say, an important thing to uh, know. And um, which use cases covers this feature? Basically, there are features that allows you to generate some JSON data by writing SQL queries, okay? So basically you run queries on relational tables and you get JSON out of it. Uh, you can store JSON in the database, of course, and since you store something, you, are also, you have to be able to somehow query this data which is stored, okay? 
One thing that the standard doesn't uh, specify up to now is uh, the modification of the JSON documents. As far as I know, they are working on it. So in the next, I don't know whether it would be SQL 2020 or whatever, uh, there should be also some functionality to modify the JSON uh, document store in the database. Okay. And what is important to, uh, to say about SQL JSON, um, in the, I can say, comparison I will show you uh, in this presentation, I based the structure and the kind of feature I was testing on SQL uh, JSON. I know it's, uh, it's kind of a special point of view, but I told myself I have to start somewhere. So I, I told me, okay, let's check what SQL JSON provides as feature, and then I checked what a number of databases support, okay, of this standard. And which are the databases I, I will uh, going to talk about are these four. Told me, let's take the two major open source database, the databases which, which are my uh, SQL and Postgres, and let's take the two main uh, uh, non-open uh, source databases, which is Oracle Database and SQL Server, okay? So what I will show you during the presentation is basically saying, okay, we need this feature. Uh, what does this pro these uh, databases provide? Okay, and basically here I took the current latest version of every one of them. I would say uh, for MySQL, uh, Postgres, and Oracle is really our releases uh, shipped this year. Uh, SQL Server the 2019 is still in uh, in kind of beta status, so uh, I didn't use it, so I stick with the last uh, official release. Okay, so let's start with the first uh, topic, generating JSON data. So here's the idea is, again, we have some relational data, some uh, relational tables. We want to execute SQL queries to get JSON out of it, okay? So what does the standard uh, mentioned to generate um, data. Basically, it mentions what they call the constructor functions. So there are four functions, okay, and based on these four functions, you can generate any type of JSON document you want. That's the idea, okay? Uh, the first two are used to create a JSON object. So the first one is also called JSON object quite uh, simply, okay? The second one is called JSON object ag, uh, meaning aggregation. That means the first one generates basically one object per row, if you want. With the second one, you can generate arrays. So you have a bunch of rows, uh, you do an aggregation, and you put all these rows in, a, in, a, in an array in the output, okay? Uh, by the way, what I mentioned in uh, between parentheses here, if you are interested to get more information in the standard, these are the reference, references uh, of the SQL standard. So the 8, 8, 12, for example, reference, I don't remember now, but uh, one part of uh, which feature should be provided by JSON obje object tag. Okay. So these are for building um, JSON object, and then you have special function to build arrays which is JSON array and JSON array ag. Here is a bit the same as, as I said before. Uh, you can see that one um, provides you, well, just a second probably. Sorry about that, I forgot to disable it. Okay. Okay. Um, yeah, to build the race. Uh, I will say, without going too much into um, uh, theory, let's have a look to a short uh, uh, demonstration just that you see um, what I'm talking about. Okay. So let's start with JSON object. As you can see, the idea is that you can define as parameter key value pairs, okay? Um, in this case, the key is always a text, um, a string that I define, but it could also be a column. It, it's not a problem. So you need two values. Basically, you say, this is my key, this is my value. Of course, you can specify more than two uh, attributes um, or four attributes to this uh, 
which is an object. And then as you see, in this case, I have five rows, so I get five, uh, uh, also rows as output, but they are small uh, JSON documents, okay? Uh, really simple. Um, this the same, but using the table employees. So we have in this case three employees in one department, here in department seven, so we get three small documents. Now if you want to put them together, you just combine this information. So you can say, okay, I have a JSON object. Uh, I would like to create an array based on it. So I, I, I give as a parameter the output of JSON objects to the JSON array egg. Okay, and now what you see, I have only one row, and in this row I have three, an array with three elements, okay, and are the elements we have seen uh, before, okay. And of course I can compose this thing uh, as complex as I want, so basically I can have a JSON object, some attributes, here I have an array, use some case to do some specific stuff if I need to, another JSON object, the point is you just write your SQL statement, you have to compose your, uh, your query in a way that you use the right function, okay? And then you can get a complex uh, document. For example, here we have five rows. Every row contains the department information plus an array about the employees working for this department. Here we have empty arrays. And then of course we can take again this thing here based on the subquery factoring clause this part is exactly the same I've shown you before. And then I say, okay, let's put everything that is generated by this sub subquery in another JSON object. So now I get only one document specifying the company name, and then you have one array with everything into it, okay? But I think the point, I hope it's clear, and that's the final um, result of the query. Uh, you just combine all these functions, the output they generate, and you can build more or less uh, what uh, do you want. Okay, so these are the functions to generate JSON based on, uh, uh, on SQL queries. Only four functions, but with them you can really generate uh, whatever uh, you want. At least I, also when I had to use them to generate some real uh, stuff, I never had a case where I told myself, okay, how can I generate this kind of structure? Now, what is the actual implementation of this function by the, um, the four databases I'm covering here. If we, if we take my SQL, they basically have the four functions. So they have four functions with exactly the same name. The same, I would say, um, kind of uh, scope, but the syntax is different. So instead, for example, specifying key value, you just specify commas or stuff like that. So the syntax is different, but what they do is exactly the same. So if you take the, the standard function or a query written with a standard function, you can easily rewrite it uh, in MySQL and it works, okay? The only limitation here is that the standard function have some additional parameter to control the output, what happens if you have errors, null values, and stuff like that, and these stuff are not available in MySQL. So it's a bit more limited what you can do. Uh, Oracle supports um, uh, almost everything which is in the standard, not everything. There are some advanced functionality which is not there, but in general, uh, the coverage of the standard is uh, quite good. Uh, Postgres, they have function with similar names, so already the function name is not the same. The syntax, however, is closer to MySQL. Don't know why, but in any case, they are not uh, not at all written again like the standard. And they also provide uh, way more functions. So they are not limited to four functions. In Postgres, they have quite a lot of functions to deal uh, with this kind of, in this kind of situation. But again, you can more or less do exactly the same thing. I tried to rewrite a number of queries with the different databases and I was able to do it every time. It's just, I would say, um, a pity that the standard is not supported, otherwise you could simply take the same query. Uh, from the other side, SQL Server is completely different. So they have a completely different idea how they generate JSON. Um, and just to give you an idea, let me show you an example. What SQL Server does, and they, they do the same thing with, uh, for generating XML. 
is that they write, uh, you have to write regular SQL, so it is a small select, and then you add four JSON path. Okay? And as soon as you add four JSON paths, basically the output instead of being relational, it gives you a JSON document where the name of the attribute is the name uh, in the JSON and the value, of course, is the, is the value. And then, again, here you combine the stuff. So you say, okay, this, these are the employees that we have seen before. Let's put them together with, uh, with um, the department. Here you do not specify that you want an array. It's simply used, it's simply uh, per default an array because there are many rows that are returned. Again, you say JSON pass. In addition, they have some options to say, okay, how we deal with nulls, okay? Then again, you get a JSON document. You can put it uh, a subquery in another select uh, with its own JSON pass, and then you get, in this case, basically the same document that we have seen before, okay? So the idea, again, here you can generate um, more or less the same things, but the syntax is completely different. You write a regular, SQL statement, you just add four JSON paths to every select statement, okay? So this is for the generation. Um, now let's have a look to storing JSON data, okay? So now we'll, uh, you really get some data from the application or from somewhere, which is JSON, and you want to store it one uh, one, one directly in the database. So. Uh, before talking about that, just a short um, yeah, common digression from my side about designing JSON documents. As I mentioned before, JSON is flexible. It's fine. Uh, you can use it to store whatever you want, more or less. Okay? And it, that's one of the reasons why we want to use it, uh, because it's really easy and uh, flexible. The problem if you start, um, and uh, sorry, before that, and of course, as I mentioned in the introduction, it can be good to, to, um, to mix JSON and relational data in the same schema. And there are really very good reasons to do it. Okay, so that's not a problem. And uh, the problem is that since the structure is flexible, okay, that's good to store the data, but later on, if you store the data, probably you have to also query it. And if you don't notice the the, the structure of the data it's, uh, us is usually a problem, or at least you will not per the application will not perform well because the structure is unknown, so it might only write some generic queries to access this data, okay? So the point is, even though JSON is flexible, please be careful if you store it, remember that at some point in time you have to query it, so it would be good to stick on a specific schema, okay? Because if you have a multitude of different schemas, what happens if that your application will be a huge if, then, else, if, then, okay? Because you have to say, okay, if I have this attribute, this thing, or this structure, I have to process the data in a different way, and it, it will be a mess, okay? So it's really better to just stick on few schemas, okay? Uh, and not, uh, not to be too flexible. Okay, now, uh, if you want to store JSON in uh, a relational database, of course, you need some uh, columns to, to store it. So the, the question is, do we have a JSON data type? Uh, if we check what the, the SQL standard does, basically say, no, we do not want a JSON data type. Okay, it's better to use another data type which is already available in the database, uh, typically a character or binary string. Okay, and um, so the, the standards say we don't need it. Uh, the main advantage of, or why probably they took this decision is that it's much easier to implement both for the database engine and developers, but also for all the tools that access the database. Because every tool uh, that you can use to, I don't know, execute some select on a table if you have an additional data type, it must be extended to understand what this new data type is, how to display it, and so on, okay? So you have a lot of integration, or also the tool that export imports the data need to be extended for the new data type. So not having it, it's much easier for the implementation. Of course, the, 
Uh, the problem with it is that you do not have an automatic validation because if you have a JSON data type, when you store something, it also must be validated, okay? And in addition, since the content is not, uh, I mean, the database engine is kind of not aware of the content, there is no special optimization in access, accessing this data. And that's, from a performance point of view, can be a problem, okay? So that's what the, the standard says. Um, in addition, the only, I would say, um, additional thing to consider is that since validation is important, and you do not have a, an automatic validation, what the standard uh, says is also as a way to validate the content that we will see in a moment. But if we check the four databases, we can see that uh, MySQL decided to implement a JSON data type, so they have a, a JSON data type. I mean, if you create a column of type JSON, you can store into it only JSON, clearly. Oracle followed the standard, so you can use Varchar or CLOP columns for it. PostgreSQL have two data types. They have JSON and JSONB. JSON is, you can consider it more or less as a text information to store what uh, you want to store. JSONB is binary, therefore it's, uh, uh, it has more features. We'll see later on uh, some restriction where only JSONB data types can be, for example, queried in a certain way with indexes and so on. So they have the two uh, kind of data types. And SQL Server um, doesn't have a specific data type. They say just use an NVAR char for it, and it's uh, fine. Okay. Now, since um, MySQL and, uh, no, MySQL, sorry, uh, Oracle database and SQL Server doesn't have a JSON data type, the question is how to validate it. And so the standard says, okay, we need some validation, so we add a new predicate, check constraint. So you can define a constraint. You say, okay, this column contains JSON. That means that when uh, uh, the insert is executed, the constraint will be checked, and if it's not valid JSON, you get an exception. Okay. In addition, the standard also say you could also add additional information to say it's a JSON array, it's a JSON object, or a JSON uh, scalar value. Okay. Um, if you do not specify nothing, is the default is JSON value, so it's anything that, I mean, could be an array, an object, or a scalar, okay, all three are possible. But if you want to restrict one column and say, I just want to store only arrays, you, you can do it. And in addition, the, um, the standard also uh, let you specify whether the keys of the JSON attributes is unique or not, okay? And this is uh, something which is optional, but you can say, okay, I can have only one key in one JSON, uh, in one part of the JSON document that uh, uh, must be unique, okay? Now, if we check again how the databases um, implement that, we can say that uh, MySQL and Postgres doesn't have this problem because they have a JSON data type, so the validation takes place uh, uh, always. But what is interesting to see is that they also do not have a feature to implement the type constraint or the, uh, the unique key constraint. Or better, the unique key constraint is always enforced. And I uh, just want to give you a short example because it's something in my opinion, not very really good, and you should be aware of it. I mean, if I create a table, and I say, okay, let's use JSON. Here I'm using MySQL, but exactly the same thing happened in Postgres, okay? So I created a table. I say, okay, let's insert some, um, um, some data. I will say, okay, let's say one, B is, uh, sorry, is two and C is three, okay? So really simple, if you select, you get what you expect, okay? A small JSON document with A, B, and C. Now the question is, what happens if I insert this document, but I have uh, two values, uh, I mean, two attributes with the key C, okay? 
basically, as I mentioned in the standard, you can decide, do I want to let the database engine do that or not? Okay? And uh, in uh, MySQL and Postgres, they say you can do it, but the point when you select the data you, you just inserted, basically you lose some data because they enforce you to get some unique keys. And so what happened is the last key you inserted for one specific uh, uh, key, it's the one which is uh, stored. Okay, so be very careful if you use it. I mean, it's not necessarily very bad, but you have to know it. Otherwise, you might end up losing information and you don't know uh, why. So MySQL and Postgres just um, enforce unique keys by just throwing away whatever they want, more or less. Okay, um, and be careful in Postgres in addition that uh, it works like that only for JSON B. So the binary format, if it's text one, no problem, you can store whatever you want. Uh, Oracle database implements uh, the predicate, but not time, type constraint. So you can define is JSON, is JSON uh, with unique keys, but not is, J, is a JSON array, for example. And SQL Server, instead of implementing the predicate, they have a function which is called is JSON. It's very similar, so you can create your constraint on it but you cannot specify type and uniqueness constraint, okay? So this, this was about uh, storing uh, JSON data, and now since you store it, at some point in time you want to query it, okay? And, and that's the next uh, point. So for querying uh, data, what the standard uh, specifies is that you have a, a, a so-called JSON pass um, a SQL JSON path language. Uh, it's simply a simple language just to specify what part of the JSON you want to query or extract, okay? Um, so it's specified in the standard. Uh, there are a number of uh, places in the standard where they talk about it. Notice that is a kind of, in, it was in, inspired more or less up based on the JavaScript standard even though it's not a superset, not a sub, uh, subset, so it's just an, they, get, they got some inspiration from it, but they clearly say we do not want to uh, uh, comply with this standard. But you might recognize some stuff. So uh, how it works, basically if you get such a small document, what you can specify is something like, okay, I want to extract this string, how I identify it, I get dollar, it's always the beginning of the document. Then you have dot notation, you get, okay, an element which is called company name, which is here, and so extract this information. So as we will see later on, we have functions that you can say, okay, I have this document, this is my past language expression, and I get the output, uh, rather simple. Of course, you can deal with arrays, so you can write something like that and say, okay, Beginning of the document, I have an array which is called depths. I want the first element in the array, my zero-based array. Uh, then in the array, I have another array which is called emps, uh, is this one. And then there are also some functions like size, for example, and you get, okay, I have three elements in this array. So not only you can identify which part of the document you want to work on, but you can also say, uh, there are a number of functions where you can, uh, you can apply, check, for example, which data type it is, uh, and stuff like that. There are not so many functions, about a dozen, not, not more. Uh, when you deal with arrays, there are a number of ways to say, okay, I want only the index from two to four, or you can specify something like, I want the last element in, in the array. Stuff like that are possible, so it's quite easy to deal uh, with arrays. And finally, what you can also specify are kind of filters. In this case, I specify, okay, we have the beginning of the document, we have the array depths. I can use a wildcard to say any element in this array. And then with, uh, with this syntax, you say, okay, I want to check whether there is at least one of the IDs in this array, which is equal to 12. In this case, we have this one, so I get a, a value true out of it. So this thing will be used in specifically in where condition where you can say, okay, do I have a document with this specific uh, content? Okay, so you can specify expression with filters uh, on it. 
Now, out uh, different uh, standards, uh, the different database support the standard. Uh, MySQL basically only have the dollar and some accessor. For that, I mean the dot notation plus how they deal with arrays, stuff like that. But they do not have function and uh, uh, not every kind of way of specifying the content is supported. Oracle database supports most of it. There are some predicates and methods which are missing, but I would say to a good degree, they, they support the standard. Uh, Postgres on the other side, they say, no, we have a completely different idea how we want to do it. So they have a completely different syntax. Even though I must say uh, Postgres in this area uh, just committed last week, I guess, if I'm not wrong, they just committed last week a patch that brings the SQL uh, JSON pass language into Postgres 12. So it's not yet available, but there is one patch that should implement all these things. Didn't test it yet, but I saw that they, uh, they, they committed it uh, last week. And SQL Server, uh, basically similar to MySQL, so they have the dollar, we can specify dot notation, they have some uh, accessor, but uh, not the full, let's say, implementation of the, of the, um, uh, of the standard. Now, based on this language, as I said, there are a number of uh, functions to access or to use them. And here we have four functions. The first one is JSON exist. As you can imagine, you use this one usually in where condition to say, okay, I want to check whether I have a document with a specific uh, content, okay? Uh, then you have a function which is JSON value. J with JSON value, you extract a scalar value from a JSON document. So you have a complex document, you ju are just interested in one scalar value, you can get it with this function. Then you have JSON query, you can extract a piece of a document, doesn't need to be scalar, can be an array of complex documents, anything. And then you have a JSON table, which is used in the kind of opposite way, is because I will show you an example. You can use it to kind of translate JSON data to a relational view or table, whatever you want to call it. But let me show you a couple of examples. Uh, it's probably um, easier. So, um, first of all, I just uh, create a table with a JSON column. I define the constraint as we specified, as, as I mentioned before. I store into it the, the same document I already showed you a couple of times during the generation and during the, when I show you the simple example of pass uh, language, okay? So I have just one row with this document into it. So it's, again, this one that you already saw a couple of times. So what I can do is something like that. I can say, okay, JSON value, I want a scalar. Input, I have the JSON column. So I say, okay, give me the company name. Okay, company name is this one. Or give me the size uh, of the array. These are the two, uh, basically the two um, expression we already saw before. So it's to get scalar. This query, I have a JSON exists to check do uh, department number 12 exist somewhere in this document in the array, in the array which is called depths? And if it exists, I want to return the full document. So if I specify dollar, give me the old document. Uh, this is the case you have thousands of documents to it and you just want the documents with uh, depth no equal 12. And here finally is the JSON table is what I mentioned before, the idea is to convert in some kind of relational structure the JSON data. So what you, s you can do is to use JSON data, as you can see, I, I use it in the from clause, okay? So the input is the JSON data. On which part of the document I want to work? So in, it's the array storing the departments. And then I, I must specify what is the output. So I will say which are the columns, since I'm I want some relational data. So I have, I have a department number, which is an integer, and where I find it. I have a department name, which is a varchar2, where I find it, and so on. And then since this array contains another array, what I can do is specify a so-called nested pass, and to say, okay, let's deal with this uh, nested array. And again, I, uh, I specify the array, and I, again, I specify 
column and data types and where to find these columns. Okay? And if you see the results uh, below, you just get the name of all the departments. Uh, for, for the first department, the one having several employees, you get several rows uh, because it's uh, denormalized if you want the output uh, and so on. So this is, would be a, a simple way, for example, to define a view uh, story uh, or showing JSON data in, into a relational format. So if you have some application that cannot deal with JSON, you could build some, some views to get this data uh, out of JSON. Okay. Now, how the four databases deal with these functions? Uh, MySQL uh, only have the JSON table, uh, the JSON table function, but they provide additional function with which you can do what we have seen before. Huh? For example, instead of JSON exists, you can use JSON contain parts, it's similar, uh, you can check it. Or JSON extract, if you want to get a piece of a JSON document, that's doable. Oracle has the four function. Not everything is supported, but I would say most of the functionality is there. Uh, Postgres, again, has a completely different implementation. So they have different type of uh, uh, operator. For example, this operator can be used or this operator to access a piece of a JSON uh, uh, document. So it's a, yeah, it's a completely different syntax. You have to learn it. But then they have also some functions like JSON2 record set is something similar to the JSON table. So also with this uh, JSON to record set, you can convert a JSON document to a relational, uh, uh, re to relational if you want. And SQL Server has JSON value, JSON query, okay? So they do not have JSON um, table, but they have open JSON, which is something, I would say, similar in that area, okay? Um, so it's a bit different what uh, they implemented. What is also important to uh, mention, when you query data, of course, if you have a lot of data, you need indexes, okay? You cannot uh, do it without indexes if you want decent performance. The important message here is that all four databases allows you to create bitmap, uh, bitmap, sorry, uh, bit indexes on a part of a JSON document. So you can take, for example, the JSON value function and create a, a bit on it, and so, uh, when you use, for example, JSON exists to access a specific part of the document, this operation can be uh, executed uh, by using this index. So that's uh, no problem, so you can create something like that. Uh, it works uh, well, maybe the syntax is a bit different between the four, but you can do it. That's the important thing to consider. Um, notice that indexes in Postgres can only be created on JSON B. Uh, data type, so it must be binary, otherwise you cannot index it, okay? And again, as I mentioned before, if you don't know the structure, then it will be a problem to be efficient of finding the data. Of course, you might want to use some inverted index, but again, inverted index are not uh, best for performance. And why I'm, I'm, uh, I'm talking about them, notice that Postgres and uh, Oracle Database also let you create some inverted index. So you can more or less index a complex JSON document without knowing anything about what is the content and then search for the element called ID. But of course, again, it's an inverted index. It won't be as fast as if you create a regular B3 index uh, on the data. But you can do it. And as far as I see, uh, uh, SQL Server and uh, MySQL do not have this possibility. Maybe there are some extensions, but not uh, was not able to say to see this kind of feature. So in summary, I would say uh, if we check the support of SQL JSON, uh, SQL JSON only, for the four databases, uh, the support of MySQL is, um, I would say, not very good. It partially supports four features out of 22, remember, there are 22 features. Oracle database, it supports, uh, fully support four, and partially support 12 of the feature. And I would say uh, it's the best support out there. And it's not, I would say, a coincidence simply because the standard was written by IBM and Oracle. So, okay, they implemented what they, they were probably already uh, um, uh, standardizing with IBM. Uh, Postgres doesn't basically support the standard. 
by coincidence, some stuff works, but it's not a real support. But as I mentioned, there are patches which are, one was already committed last week, and there are other patches to implement all the function I mentioned here. So I expect maybe in, in uh, Postgres 12 to see more of this stuff coming also in Postgres um, as well. And SQL Server only su partially support two features, so it's really weak uh, support. From the other side, if we talk about the JSON support in relational databases, in my opinion, I would say the, all the four databases I consider are, have a really good JSON support. I mean, if you need to store some JSON content, query it, and so on, it can be done, and it's, the support is good. Um, so it's a real possibility to really reduce the number of databases you are using. I don't need a special engine just for that. Uh, and over time, they should get better and better. If I see how much they are implementing uh, the, different, uh, uh, different, the developers of the different databases is quite good. So they are spending, uh, investing money to get the JSON support better and better. Uh, but in general, as I mentioned, the SQL JSON support is weak, but it's also 2016 the standard, so it's not such a surprise. Okay. And if you are really looking uh, for the best database in this area, it's uh, Oracle database for the moment, uh, the leading one. Okay, that's basically everything I prepared for today. Since I'm already two minutes too late, I will say if, there are any, if you have any questions, let's uh, do them uh, offline. Otherwise, thank you very much for your attention and have a good afternoon.